-hmm. time to speak about a sport that used to you know make uh, positive headlines before but standards uh, dwindled in between but now there are revival strategies happening and of course elections for boxing association of kenya are slated for 28th of this particular month and in studio i'm glad to be joined by one man who is seeking to get elected the president of bak and he says his passion for boxing is unmatched and he wants to put in place structures uh, to ensure that boxing gets to another level of course it's jamal but you know, Omok, President Vipi. Salama kabisa. Uko Viti? Nashkuru. Umepiga luku ya ki, kiboki. <laughs> this is a champion. <laughs> champion. Yeah. Kidogo studio watu tukimbie ju jab ineza. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. My anyway, how have you been? My name is Anthony Otieno. That's my real name. Jamal is just a nickname. Boxing nickname? No. How nickname. did the name come about? Ah, it's a long story. <laughs> long story for another day. Yes. And we also joined by former boxer Duncan Kuria, also known as Sugar Ray. VP. Ah, Maxwell. Kosalama. Niko Pokabisa. Elections. 28th. Are there elections or there are no elections? Elections will be held on 28th of June 2019 at Kasarani at 10 a.m. There are other opposing forces saying that, you know, the date for elections. Is, is is wrongly said. Why? Why? No, elections have been said and uh, actually the people who said uh, the executive members of the BAK, they called a council meeting which was held at Serena Hotel. Uh, they came, <coughs> we came up with minutes. The minutes were forwarded to all the relevant government departments including the office of uh, Madam Sports Registrar who had stopped another election because the election was meant to be done in May. May 28th. So, Madam Registrar requested us to extend the period by one month so that members can comply. And this, when I talk member, I'm talking about county associations who are members of BAK Federation. Yes. So, we were, we were requested to extend the period by, by 28 days, which we did by 30 days. So, by all, all accounts, the elections are going to go ahead on 28th which is Friday next week. Jamal, you are on ballot. You are seeking to get elected the president. You are the favorite. <laughs> but you are, receiving, you are receiving, you know, <laughs> stiff competition from uh, a man who had indicated that he's not vying, but he rescinded his decision. That is John Kameta, the outgoing president. He says that he will be on the ballot again. But just before we get into that, I know you people have been crisscrossing several parts of the country trying to uh, take Ndondi Mashinani initiative at the grassroots. How is the reception from the locals, especially in Viga and Busia? As I can say, our team, because this is not a one-man show. We work as a team. That's called Team Jamal. We have crisscrossed all over the countries, the counties which has boxing. We've done, like, giving out equipments, uh, taking equipment to each kitchen, every club, and what you want to do to, give, to bring the change to boxing is to bring boxing to institutions, learning institutions like schools, colleges, and all that. We need to nurture talent from... At the young age. Yes. And we have so much talent in boxing. We were in uh, Busia just the other day. There was an overwhelming crowd of boxing. And you can see now boxing coming back where it was. Uh, the reception from the locals, do you think they are passionate and looking forward to the new dawn that you are preaching as you traverse several parts of the country? Definitely. Now boxing is coming up. You see, under the leadership of, of our outgoing, let me call him outgoing president, used to, to work as one man show. That was the problem. But now under my leadership, because I work as a team, there are some things that I don't know that Sugar knows. There are some things that somebody else doesn't know. Like, we have people like Nene. They have been boxing for all over the years. They advise you that, that you can do this and you can change the boxing. That's the only thing that we need in boxing. Teamwork. So you, what you are trying to say is that you will exercise inclusivity and bring like-minded stakeholders of boxing together so that they can put in place mechanisms that will restore the glory, lost glory of the sport. Definitely. Sugar Ray, yes. as a, a former international boxer, do you think the welfare of former boxers has been addressed? Because going by the plight of former boxers, Suleiman Bilali, Congestina, Achieng, something must have gone wrong somewhere. What do you attribute this to? Uh, I think your question, uh, 
the plight have not been been addressed properly. Uh, we have had many cases, apart from the ones that you have mentioned, of former boxers who are living in abject poverty. Yes. They used to be internationals. They represented this country, flew the Kenyan flag very high. But uh, as time went by, I think out of not preparing for life after boxing, they ended up being miserable people uh, in the society and uh, they they actually tarnish the name the image of the sport because people they because there's so many people associate boxing with the negativity around their lifestyle and i'm um, thinking that all this goes down to the leadership of the federation because the federation in the subsequent years uh, never took attention of uh, giving these people life skills somebody was employed probably in the armed forces or kenya police and you see now these guys when they are employed in the forces they don't work they actually on full-time release most of the time uh when they retire from their jobs the only thing they knew was boxing and uh, with new changes that are coming up every other time now there's age limit in amateur boxing where if you get to 40 years then you stop participating in boxing uh, in some of the forces teams they were not allowing their boxers to turn professionals so we had a backlog where you find our boxers are taking so much time before they graduate to professional level and so that means they cannot continue earning a living out of the sport in the process we have so many many cases of boxers who are living miserable lives but we are thinking of uh, starting a program with Tim Jamal, if he wins, not if, when he wins, uh, whereby we are going to work together with him to open an as a welfare association. It's, we are going to call it Kenya Boxers Welfare Association, where we can try and get resources and create employment opportunities for these, box, for these former boxers, at least to operate as uh, coaches in different clubs which we are, we are proposing to open because all the former social halls, like here in Nairobi, the social halls that were there, you know, some of them were converted to be churches and doing businesses, and we want to revive the sport in the grassroots. And we want to second these former boxers to go and impart knowledge to the, to the youths in the clubs at the grassroots level. At the moment, we have a lot of county associations which have come up as a result of devolution because sports act devolved the sport basically to the counties so formerly boxing was structured in form of the former provinces now we have to go down to the county level and uh, Tim Jamal has uh, gone around the country distributing resources in terms of equipment to the different clubs these clubs will require qualified coaches to impart knowledge to the youth, to the youth and young or boxers that are coming up within the counties, and so we are thinking that will be the best way to utilize the former boxers who have got the skill of the sport, but they have been left just to in isolation. live miserable life. They are not involved in the sport at all. When you come to matters to do with uh, referee and judging, they are also not involved there. So basically, the knowledge that they had which they acquired over the years is being misused or rather it's not being utilized at all and we're thinking that is a waste of a resource that is very important in terms of nurturing talent in the country now you are you are you are campaign manifesto revolves around dodi man machinani what is this initiative all about first to add up on what sugar said not only coaching will, will do we need to do entrepreneurship for these guys yes we need to and proper investments is educate them about business you know me i'm a businessman you can you can take some some coaches and some guys after, after enrolling to the welfare so that they can do business they open small business and, and continue another thing we need to do is to put insurance for these boxers we, we will partner with the insurance they have so many companies insurance we can partner with them and they can offer affordable amount to ensure that you know, box on the ring, they, they, they do box on the ring. And after that, accidentally you can get hurt. So it will cater for the 
for the for the insurance. Now going back to what you said about Doni Mashinani. Doni Mashinani is real. Something that will happen. We have so many things that we're going to do after me getting through the office. We are, we are we have a, we've been approached with so many corporate who are saying they, they are interested in boxing, but they don't they want to see how we participate in boxing first. After there. Yeah, you'll see it for yourself. Transparency mm. and accountability has been, you know, the main undoings in various sporting federations and several corporates have shied away from coming on board to partner with the local federations because of lack of corporate confidence. Do you think under your helm, BAK will attract sponsorships from local corporates? <laughs> Master, I said I'm a businessman. Accountability is the key. You must account to each and every coin. You see, as in boxing, there's not rocket science. You, you take the boxers to the hotel, and you book the hotel, and you go and play. That's all. Under my leadership, I'll account for each and every penny that we're going to be sponsored by, by any organization. So their welfare, their interests will be well catered for as well under your leadership. Because there has also been claimed that, you know, most people when they are campaigning, immediately decent a blueprint, but immediately they get elected. <laughs> they change. <laughs> they change. <laughs> Boxing fraternity for those who are watching, they should not expect something of that sort from you? or mm, uh, Maxwell, my background, I've been into my tattoo industry before. I've taken boys from a period of becoming bad guys to good guys. So, I want you to watch this space. And I'm a leadership, it will be fine. <laughs> That's why I assure you. Maybe talk to us with regards to how you seek to partner with the county. Because I understand Suleiman Bilali, former boxer, he went through some rehabilitation program that uh, you spearheaded uh, and uh, congestion as well in partnership with the county. How is the situation going to you know, pan out when now you are sent to power official? There have been stories running around the media that congestion is not doing well. Is in Sharks taking alcohol, even Bilali. But let me tell you one thing. Right now, Congestina is in Mombasa, at Ariab. Bilali is at Ariab and in Parklands. We had a, a story on Ghetto Radio saying that uh, Bilali is out drinking. You see, rehabilitation is a process. It's not a one thing. thing. You need to do it gradually. So it's a process. And I know for sure. And the leadership of Mike, Mike Smoller has helped these guys a lot. We know we'll, we'll, we'll revive others, and there are so many people who are languishing in poverty. We're going to do it slowly by slowly. We'll bring back the glory of boxing back to where it was. And regard of our boxers who are, former boxers who are not doing very well, we'll put a welfare, as you guys said, and let me tell you one thing, we'll walk each and every doorstep on, of boxers who are heroes of Kenya, and they'll be back to where they were. Shugare, yes. let's talk about now the nitty gritties of election. It's on 28th. Uh, Jamal Otieno and John Kameta are the two candidates yes. on the ballot. But what are the dynamics of this poll? They have attracted uh, huge stakes and uh, a lot of interest associated with the same, considering that probably amateur boxing aspect of the sport is integral part of boxing in general, even it's a feeder system to pro. Yes. But why... Are the stakes too high this time round? Uh, <laughs> I think the stakes are very high because first, I think the entry of Jamal changed the game totally. Uh, when Jamal came on board, he has done what many yeah. have never done ever since because before he's even elected into office, he has gone across the country distributing equipments using his own resources. That is something that has never been done ever. We have been able to hold championship in the country. For instance, he was able to fund the national novices, which were done at Charter Hall for the first time ever in this country. He was able to fund the, na the national intermediate, which were done in Thika. We did the first leg of the, no, before that we did Kenya Open at Charter Hall again, which was very successful. We were able to hold the first leg of the national league in uh, Nakuru, and uh, At the Madison Square. Madison Square Garden. And then eventually we have done the second leg of the National League at, in Bungoma. So I think uh, the effect of Tim Jamal is being felt across the country. And I think that one is also now help, uh, spreading the fear 
to those who are opposing opposing him but uh, the main reason why people are being uh, maybe it's generating a lot of interest could be because the former or the those who the incumbents have overstayed in LA in the office for more than two years boxing elections were supposed to be held uh, in may 2017 we are now in 2019 june so why that long extension technically somebody is in office illegally because can you imagine if in this country election is supposed to be done 2022 in ongelewa sana sana so 2022 imagine we don't do elections and then we overstay for two years there'll be no peace in this country but in boxing it has been allowed to continue that way but uh, at least finally now we have a serious initiative whereby elections have been organized the government has sanctioned uh the sports registrar has uh, i've seen a communication by sports registrar confirming that she'll be coming to observe the elections on 28th and so i'm hoping at the you know the long period in which nothing much was happening in the federation is coming to an end because we are going to have a team which has got a clear mandate to run the sport in the country so hopefully on 28th the mess that is in boxing in the country comes to an end and we start preparing our team for all african games which are supposed to be held in morocco sometimes in august and we only have about a month and to talking about all africa games i understand athletics kenya is conducting their trials this particular weekend at kasarani stadium boxing there were two concurrent events one happening at the <laughs> charter hall and another one happening at the bamburi beach why the concurrence yet only one team is supposed to represent the country this one is all about i told you it's all about one man show <laughs> it's kameta who decided to bring another we, 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 were, we were at serena organizing one calendar. he says his activities are recognized by aiba though <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're supposed to there, there, there are laws in kenya so i go to aiba before we, uh, we come to the law in kenya we, we made a calendar a one event calendar a unified calendar yes he's, he's the one who split the calendar but let me tell you after election we're going to go to Well, I'm telling you, I'm assuring you. We're going to go to Morocco. We'll do a good selection, and you'll see. You'll be there to, to, to witness. And when this selection is, uh, is conducted, are you also seeking incorporating uh, the other boxers closely associated with Kameta, who is the outgoing president? Boxers will not be hurt in these wrangles. We will incorporate each and every boxer. If you're good, you'll go. We'll do a very good after we just wait. after the election we'll sit down and do another selection a good one yes maybe uh, just to add on what you have just asked it needs to be understood that boxers don't vote in the boxing elections mm. they are neutrals. actually delegates that are you know the leadership of their teams for instance the people you're talking about it's only two which is uh, kdf and kenya Please. prison and uh, to the best of my knowledge kba K kdf is likely to get a certificate and therefore they will qualify to participate in the election but prison they have a challenge one of the officers whom is supposed to be a delegate when seeking for registration in registrar's office uh retired from the service prison so they are seeking to replace that one and i think it will be a tall order so probably prison might not be able to to participate in the election but the boxers from those organizations are not going to suffer any harm out of the political mess by their leaders someone is asking via twitter handle felix okura watching from ronga inakuru is telling me to ask jamal uh, as an amateur wing of boxing how do you seek working with k KPBC Kenya Professional Boxing Commission I think he meant that mm -hmm. how do you see working with KPBC wing for the growth of the sport you because see, those are two wings but uh, affiliated separate, to boxing yes. yeah yes this is pro and this is amateur yes. now you see from amateur you become a professional and for the look of things people were not participating in boxing there were not so much events that can nurture talents to come to become to come from amateur to becoming a professional as we go on and our manifesto we will do inter clubs inter counties and even go further so after 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 
you, you, you sugar said if you reach 40 you're not supposed to be an amateur again yes you'll be turned professional and we're going to have good working relationship with the, with the with the with the professional boxing because we, we already have good, even the election they're coming soon so i hope i, I know under my leadership we will we will do we will work properly with them Rock Promotions has not been closely associated with amateur boxing, it's in pro. But what do you make of the practice in the country? Do you think the rock promoters are reaping the sweat that belongs to a boxer who, <laughs> who sweats in the ring? You say about promotion, I can't, I can't comment. I as, as, a, as a boxer, <laughs> because someone is commenting here with regards to rock promotions, you see for, for our audience, they think probably it's something that cuts across. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's a problem that has... Uh, that has, uh, has been uh, affecting the professional sport for some time. Because first, we don't have enough number of uh, promoters. But then, the few ones who are there or who have been there have mismanaged the sport for some time. We have had many cases where maybe some boxers come from abroad. When they come and participate here, they are left stranded in their hotels. They are not paid. They don't know how they'll go back to their respective countries. So those, those are cases that we have heard about. But we think it's just a matter of uh, mismanagement, and which I'm, I'm thinking KPBC should be able to handle going forward. Because they, but when they promote bouts here, those bouts are supposed to be sanctioned by KPBC. So ideally, KPBC should be able to regulate that kind of behavior because in an ideal setup, ideally, what I understand with the professional boxing, they are supposed to receive the money the boxers are supposed to be paid two weeks before the event. But in most cases, you find some of these rogue promoters, they exploit that avenue whereby they don't give the money to the, feder to the commission two weeks prior to, such that boxers get into the ring without knowing for sure how they'll get their money. That's where the problem is. But you're thinking if uh, with the new team in KPBC, they are introducing a sense of professionalism in the sport and uh, going forward, I know, of course, now the cases have reduced in terms of complaints of boxers being mistreated, boxers getting into fights without contracts. That's another issue that uh, has been happening in professional boxing. But we are thinking uh, with the new team, I think that will be corrected. There's something you had asked Jamal about the link between professional and amateur. In an ideal setup, boxers are support, supposed to start at the amateur level so that they grow in the sport. You can grow up to the level, maybe you represent Kenya, f maybe at all African games, Commonwealth games, and Olympic level. Once you get to Olympic level, you don't have anything much because the Olympic is the highest level you can go. After Olympic level, regardless of your age, you can turn professional and go earn some money out of your talent, which is now professional boxing. Ideally, that's how it should be because we have cases across the world. You have a boxer from Cuba who is a two times Olympic champion, flyweight. And uh, he's 24 years and he has won two Olympic gold medals. You see? That's how it should be. That's Kenya. how it should be. But the problem in Kenya, people are overstaying in amateur. Somebody wants to go for three Olympics. It is, it is 12 years, you're staying at, at that level. So you find the people who are representing the country at that level, national team level, we don't, our depth is not good, such that those who are at the top level, if they retire from the sport, we don't have enough numbers to replace those ones who are there. So that, uh, because of this age, of course it will get a time where these people will go, go out. Then you don't have others to replace or to take their place and represent effectively, because the issue is not just to get numbers to represent, is to take people who are going there to compete and win medals. Jamal. Uh, someone is asking about the facilities. I don't know whether you're the relevant person to respond to this question because mm -hmm. uh, just like in other sporting discipline, we've seen Nick Mwendra, who is the FKF boss, uh, saying that when Kenya missed out on hosting China tournament meant for local best players because of lack of equipped facilities, someone is asking with regards to the social halls within Nairobi, how do you see going about renovating them so that they can look in good shape? Uh, and the leadership of Mike Sonko, I know he'll be able to to renovate all this all. But you see, in boxing, we don't need side things. We just need a ring and equipment. But we've talked with him, the governor. 
he said he's going to, to renovate all the all, halls, the social halls. And you know, we've been out of they've been out of boxing, so other 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 halls have returned to churches and uh, business premises, rehabilitation centers. But we know for sure, if we revive boxing, they'll come back to boxing. Boxing and non machinani initiative, you've been in a few counties, Busia, Viga, that's the cradle land of boxing. Yeah. And do you seek, you know, crisscrossing everywhere so that it's, it's sort of a national outlook initiative? Yes, we, we want to go. There, there's boxing in Kajiado. We want to visit Kajiado after the elections. There's even in Embu, there's boxing. The upcoming clubs are coming. We will crisscross all over the country. We even go to Kariza. We know that there are some guys in Kariza that can box. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> your parting shot and uh, your final thoughts with regards to your ambition besides non imaginary initiative, what else do you seek to do for the boxing in case elected DAK president? What I need to say to the fans that will bring back the glory of boxing where it was. And we urge the boxers to keep on training because they are going far. Sugare? Uh, mine, I think, is just to urge uh, the fans of the, of the sport to be coming out in numbers for this period we want them to be calm we are going for elections we are hoping to have free fair and credible elections and by the way they'll be managed by iabc so we are hoping to have a clean process whereby we are going to get our leaders and then going forward we are going to roll out programs to promote this sport across the country like jamal has just mentioned uh, so far, we have about 17 counties involved in boxing. And we have seen some interest from other counties which, uh, at, for the time being, they are not recognizing the structure of the federation. For instance, there's a lady who keeps coming for about from Wasingishu. And we don't have a club in Wasingishu, but we always encourage her. We give, whenever, whenever she comes, we allow her to participate. So that shows you there is urge to have this sport in as many counties. So we need to take this sport to the people so that it's uh, just taken just like any other sport. We also want to, it, to take boxing back to schools. <coughs> we need schools to be involved uh, just like the way we have ball games for the schools. Boxing used to be at that level. You know, we used to hear Mawego Technico, Kabete. They used to have boxing. It died. And I'm thinking that's a challenge to do with leadership. So we need to take boxing to the grassroots and uh, it goes without boxing is the second most popular sport in terms of bringing medals to the country. Second to athletics, no any other comes close. So we need to revive the sport and be as vibrant as possible. And with the leadership of Tim Jamal, there's no doubt sky is the limit. Before I let you Jamal, some Edson Odor from Rongo is asking, in case you get elected, will you, will you bring on board the other opponents? That probably is meaning uh, John Kameta, <laughs> so that there is inclusivity in terms of agenda for the sport. Because probably you also have uh, agenda that he seeks to implement in case elected. So will you go that route? Yeah, we will, we will, we will compare it with him. There's no problem. That, that one will do. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> You'll bring him on board as well. Uh, you, you see, you, you need to explain how. On board how? <laughs> I don't know what he meant, but probably he meant, uh, he meant the manifesto, the agenda. The and, agenda. Uh, I think I'll bring him on board. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks for coming through. We're going to wind up, but before we do, AFCON is happening. I know football, uh, just like uh, boxing, are all sports we are passionate about but kenya is uh, participating in the continental showpiece it will be playing algeria in their first game tomorrow jamal what are your thoughts on kenya's performance and expectation we are gonna pray for kenyans you know me i'm not a, a, a football fan but we are going to pray for kenyans <laughs> so it's about prayers Sugare. yes <laughs> no it's not just about prayers but prayers the prayers are very important uh, I come from, I, I grew up in the same estate as the captain of Arambistas, the lion of Mudurwa. Uh, Dallas is, well, in, bo in boxing we call it Dallas. So I want to wish Arambistas all the best. Uh, of course we are in a very tough pool. Uh, I know we are starting with Algeria, with Maris there. 
since his band the, the match against Tanzania that one is not winnable to us the best you can do there maybe a draw so <laughs> i'm not very hopeful the team but you know we're underestimating Tanzania uh, that is the team we need to beat by all means so that uh, maybe if we can qualify as one of the best third teams in my opinion that will be good enough all right, looking forward to that. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, Jamal Ombok Otieno, BAK presidential candidate in the upcoming poll slated for next week on 28th of June, and the former boxer Dan Kankuria, also known as Sugare, joining us to dissect about Boxing Association of Kenya elections and what they seek to do for the sport in case they are sent to power in a few days from now as we speak. We're going to be looking forward to see whether you execute your mandate and uh, don't emulate on politicians who promise, but when it comes to execution, it's an another affair, right? You'll see Maxwell. Thank you for joining <laughs> Thank us. You. Of course, it's the Touchline on Y25. My name is Maxwell Wasike. Up next, I'm being joined by Robust Duo Simon. Uh, I call him Simon. It's Sami Muraya. Alongside, of course, Tiraz Wayaki is still in the building to dissect about AFCON and uh, the build-up for weekend matches. Don't go away. Stay tuned. It's the Touchline.